This video will show you how to use our fuel pump tester. First, after you verify that the unit has been properly set up, you need to fill it with the proper test fluid. We list three test fluids in our, test, in our tester instruction booklet that we recommend for the tester. When filling the tester with fluid, make sure you fill the fluid up to within a half inch of the bolt hole. This will be the proper amount of fluid that's used in the tester, and this will guarantee that you can test all different types of assemblies. Before attempting to test any fuel pumps on the fuel pump tester, please make sure to familiarize yourself with the face of the tester. There are several gauges and switches on the unit. Number one is the flow meter. This gives you the flow of the fuel pump tester and it's measured in liters per hour. Second, you have the pressure gauge. This provides the maximum pressure output of the fuel pump. Here you have the voltmeter. This will tell you what the output power is at the terminals. And here you have the ammeter, which will give you the current draw of the pump when it's operating. This is the main power switch. When switched on, it allows the 110 AC power to go to the unit. When this is switched on, the green LED will come on and the voltmeter will read 12 volts. The second switch here is the output power switch that controls the power to the output terminals that attach to the fuel pump. When switched on, the LED will turn red and this will tell you that the output power is live. Next to that, we have the main test valve. In this position, is you will read maximum flow rate and in this position you will read maximum pressure. Now we'll show you how to test an individual fuel pump by itself. Remember, before trying to test any fuel pumps, make sure you use safety glasses and also you have gloves. For this demonstration we have only partially filled the fluid tank and we have also removed the optional splash shield for clarity. When testing an electric fuel pump, the first thing you want to do is find out what the part number is and look into our, in the included manual or on our website to find the associated pressure and flow requirements for that pump. Next, what you would do is you'd look at for one of the three adapters that are included with the tester and see which one fits into the pump that you have and plug it right in like that. Next, what you want to do is you want to turn the mains power switch on so that the tester is um, armed with power. After that, you would take your two power terminals, connect the red alligator clip to the red wire, and also the black alligator clip to the black wire. At this point, we'd like to run a dry test just to see if the fuel pump is functional. Um, and how we do that is we, we just hold the pump out of the liquid and we quickly turn on and off the power switch. If we see that the unit is running, we can proceed with the wet testing. After you verify the unit is functional during the dry test, um, if you can move to your wet test procedure. You disconnect this tube from its mounting position. Um, it's a tube that goes into the front face of the tester, and you attach this to the fuel pump with a side-to-side -side motion. All you need to do is engage about half of the fuel pump output nozzle and that will be adequate for testing. At this point you can turn on the fuel pump power and then you can put the fuel pump into the liquid. At this point since the lever is in the horizontal position it is ready to read your maximum flow rate. Flow rate is read on this gauge here. Um, this pump is supposed to make 160 plus liters per hour of flow rate. And if you look at the gauge here, you have, we have 160 liters here, and you read this gauge from the top of this float. So right now we have 160 plus liters per hour. So flow rate is good on this pump. The next operation you need to do is to close this lever in order to find the maximum pressure. You slowly close this lever, and what happens is you'll notice that the flow rate will drop off here, and the pressure will start to increase. You can either close the valve completely or just can close the valve until you reach the required pressure from the specifications in our manual or from our website. 
This fuel pump requires 100 PSI uh, minimum requ requirement and so it's making about 110, 109 PSI right now. So it's good to go. You can slowly open the valve again to reread your ma maximum flow rate which you can see again here is 160 plus liters per hour and then you can slowly close the valve again and it'll just read the next maximum pressure. So 100 is a requirement for here. These pumps are usually, we'll go over that, but we have uh, our pressure requirements are actually a minimum requirement. So it'll be 100 minimum. One other thing just to keep in mind on individual fuel pumps when you're testing them, that all individual fuel pumps will have a bypass valve built into the top for safety. You want to make sure that this bypass valve, which is usually on the top of the fuel pump, is not pointing in any direction that can cause any spray to your face or any other um, individuals. Uh, just make sure you keep an eye on that uh, bypass valve when you're closing this um, lever to make the max pressure. And that's about it. Um, max flow rate, max pressure, once you get those two parameters, if they meet the requirements, we're good to go. The fuel pump's good. Next, we will show you how to test modular assemblies in our fuel pump tester. In this segment, we'll show you how to test modular assemblies. First, we'll start by testing a non-return type fuel system assembly, which only has one output nozzle. The first thing you want to do is you want to connect the adapter harness to the unit. These adapter harnesses usually come with our modules. Um, if you don't have it, you can actually just clip directly to the pins inside the connector. After you connect the electrical harness, you can connect the two power lines to the unit. Once again, black to black and red to red. At this point, you can put the modular unit into the fluid and remove the input line and connect it in the same manner that you would connect to a normal fuel pump push it on there and we go back and forth. After you connect the hose, you're ready to test the assembly. Look into your fuel pump tester manual for the pressure and flow specs for the associated part number. You can also find these pressure and flow specs on our website. The only difference when testing a modular assembly when compared to a regular fuel pump is that you will test for pressure first rather than flow rate. So what you do first is you need to close the pressure valve into the vertical position before you turn on the power supply. At this point, you can turn the power supply on and the pressure gauge will begin to read the max pressure. The requirement for this modular unit is 50 to 60 PSI max. Um, so right now you see we're at about 57 PSI, so we're okay with pressure. Um, at this point, you wanna wait a little while. Um, you, if you look inside the module, you'll notice that the modules will be filling with fluid. Once the module has filled with enough fluid to overflow, you can start. You can begin to read your um, flow rate. It's the same process. You would open your valve slowly, and you will see that the flow meter will start to go up. This assembly requires 130 liters per hour minimum of flow rate, so I would open the valve slowly until I exceed 130 liters per hour. So at this point, I'm at about 138 liters per hour. Um, so I got 138 liters per hour here, which exceeds our minimum requirement. And I can once again just verify the maximum pressure, which is 57 PSI. So now that we have these two parameters that meet the requirements in our manual, we know that this fuel pump is good. And you can once again test flow, pressure. That's it. Another configuration of module to test is the ones that are used in return type fuel systems in cars. On these assemblies, you'll notice that there's more than one port. There is a feed port and a return port. When testing these assemblies, you would need to connect the tester pipe to the output port. This is usually the larger diameter port, and it's the port that the fuel pump hose will be connected to. Now we'll show you how to test a return type fuel system module. First, what you need to do is you need to find the associated pigtail harness to use with the assembly. Usually these come with the module when they're shipped to you. You will plug this into the adapter 
and note that the two biggest wires on the connector are the ones that you're going to be using. The connections are basically the same, black alligator clip to black wire, but on this assembly you're going to be using the gray wire to the positive red alligator clip. At this point, the unit is connected and it's ready for testing. Um, and all of the procedures with regards to getting your pressure and flow are the same. The only thing you have to keep in mind for this type of fuel system and this type of module is that you need to remove this return line from its holder and place it inside the container of the module. What this does is it simulates the fuel that is being returned from the return system to keep this module full so you can continue to test it. Other than that, all the testing procedures with regards to the switches and the flow rate are exactly the same.